After having a baby 18 months ago, full-time mum Jade became a food-free zone. Since I've had Jake, my appetite has just gone downhill dramatically. I pick at food, I don't like food, I don't look at food. I just have a very negative vibe towards food. When she was pregnant, she was actually radiant and she looked very healthy. But after she had Jake, the weight seemed to drop off and it was very, very noticeable. Jade may have lost her love for food, but has fallen head over heels for its replacement. I personally think that I have a great relationship with caffeine. <laughs> I love caffeine and caffeine probably loves me. <laughs> During the day, I could get through maybe 10, 11 mugs of coffee, a two litre bottle of Coke and cans on top. I felt beautiful yeah. when I was carrying Jake because I had more weight. I had yeah, this you can see bump. It in your arms. That's how I want to be yeah. again. <laughs> Minus the big tummy. It was straight after having Jake that my food issues started. Why would you say it was? There's been certain points that make me think, you know, as you know, my eating and a few other things like my tempers and my moods, or does it all boil down to postnatal depression? Yeah. But I've never received you know, any help or talk to anybody about it, so I don't know for definite. Yeah. It just sounds like it does. You know, there's been something serious for me to end up like this. Recognising that she might have had postnatal depression is a huge turning point for Jade. It can affect up to 10% of women after giving birth, and many like Jade don't even realise they've had it. One of the major side effects is a loss of appetite. This can result in feeling run down and irritable. 1.6 million people in the UK have an eating disorder. This includes anorexia nervosa, which has the highest rate of death compared to any other psychiatric condition. Up to 20% of anorexics die from the illness every year. Ros, Fiona, Ashley, and Morag are anorexic. Nearly every part of theirs and their family's daily routine is dominated by the disease. For the next eight weeks, they volunteered to take part in a course designed to challenge some of the key aspects of anorexia as part of their road to recovery. I'm a human being, I should be intelligent. Something went wrong somewhere. To help our sufferers address their issues, we've enlisted the help of two renowned eating disorder specialists. Consultant psychiatrist Dr Peter Rowan and eating disorder dietitian Ursula Philpott. Today the group are meeting Ursula and each other for the first time. For me, I think it started in pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, being scared, probably, of this new situation and not quite knowing how to, to manage it. Ros Hallard is 37, 5 foot 2 and weighs around 5 and a half stone. She was diagnosed with the disease after coming home from a busy life in Thailand. I think anorexia stemmed from moving back to the UK and having a baby so pro probably um, a bit of postnatal depression. I hate myself for my son not seeing me as the bubbly, outgoing, vivacious, keen, full of life person that I was. It's actually quite harrowing in a way to look at a person like that and to see what they've done to themselves and to remember how they used to look. I don't feel that I have divorced that I'm married and I would like her back again. I want to see her again. I wish it, I wasn't how I am, but I don't know what to do and I'm scared and I just need some help. So it sounds like um, the fear of change is, is, is quite yeah. overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah, I totally understand where you're coming yeah. from. Whenever I do change something, whether that be eat something a bit more or just 
not doing what I usually do. My anxiety levels go right through the roof and I don't feel like there's ever going to be any end to it. The first time I was aware that I started to have difficulties with food was around the age of 17. I was going to be going to university and I panicked. Fiona Kelly is 25, five foot five and weighs six and a half stone. Her anorexia forced her to give up her dream job as a maths teacher. When I was at university, everything was about numbers. It was a complete number game for me because I'm a mathematician. Um, I discovered calories for the first time and I could be very controlling and make sure I only had a certain number of calories. Um, and I read in a magazine somewhere that you had to do over 10,000 steps. And so that became another of my rules. It felt like an equation that I was putting in the numbers and the output that I expected would come out. Of course, weight's not as predictable as that. I don't want to be Fiona the anorexic anymore. I want to be Fiona the person. It's taking over my life. I don't want it to take over my life. It's not even necessarily because you want no. to do more. It's just a punishment thing, and I then adopted this attitude that I needed to earn my food. Ashley is just 20, five foot nine and eight stone seven. Anorexia affects one in 2,000 boys compared to one in 250 girls. His bright future as a footballer fell apart after a hand injury. My dreams were shattered, I suppose. I then tried to get a grip of my life in other ways, and uh, food was the main focus for me then. I suppose it was my way of saying, I don't really need pastas anymore, I don't really need these carbohydrates because I don't need the energy anymore because I'm not exercising like I used to be. It bred from that, and really now it is kind of more of a, an OCD thing now, to be honest with you. It's obsessional behaviour that you get with anorexia, strange patterns form, you, you do things in a certain order, eating at certain times, not eating after a certain time. He has the same plate, he uses the same teaspoon which sits in the same place and it's pretty much like that every time he eats. It's just utter, utter fear of losing control. Anorexia to me is like a cancer. It's become, it's become its own terminal illness for me. And it's just a vicious circle where I'm just turned into this resentful, bitter, unfulfilled 20 year old. If I don't do something about it, this will be it forever. I can I understand exactly what what you mean. I'm thinking, well, I've got to I've got to go I've got to walk here. I've got to go there and do this. I've got yeah, to do this yeah. and then go swimming and then come back. And if anybody tries to get in the way of it, then you just ignore them mm. and you're kind of blinkered. It, it's like having another completely different side to your personality. Yeah. Anorexia, it's like a, an evil twin, sort of sitting on your shoulder and constantly nagging at you to eat less and do more, and uh, never really gives you any peace. So. There's you, normal you, and there's anorexic you. Morag Fieldsend is 36, five foot five and weighs seven stone five. She's lived with anorexia since her teens and it dominates every minute of her day. I have a certain amount of walking that I have to do to sort of allow myself a certain amount of calories every day. She will walk um, particular routes, particular distances for a particular time. We're talking an hour and a half plus. It can be uh, snowing and she'll still have to go out for uh, the walk for a particular period, for a particular distance. It just sort of takes over your life before you really know where you are. Morag is petrified her daughter will develop the disorder. I'm very conscious that I don't want Lizzie to pick up any of my bad habits. Yeah. But as she gets older, she'll become more aware of these kinds of things and I'm going to have to explain myself to her and I don't want to have to do that. I would undoubtedly describe uh, anorexia as a monster. It can take the joy out of people's lives. Throughout the series, the group are taking part in a radical plan to help them come to terms with their disorder. The purpose of the course, as far as our 
anorexics are concerned, is to help them develop better insight into the illness and understand it better, help them develop the wish to want to get better, and to provide them with at least some of the tools which will enable them to begin to move forwards with the illness and also beginning to develop a more normal and healthy relationship with food and eating.